What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. We've got some breaking news. Here to break it. Nicholas, BDG, big dogs got to eat. Sam Darnold, the former number three overall pick for the New York Jets. The golden boy. The red golden boy. He's no longer in the Big Apple. I told him to get the fuck out of here. He's now in Carolina where the Panthers have given up a six-round pick this year. And then next year, they gave up a second and a fourth round. So we've got three picks, future picks, a little bit less valuable. But still, that second round pick says something. It says that they are investing into Sam Darnold, who is, I believe, 24, if not turning 24 very, 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 very soon. Makes an interesting dichotomy. One, I believe that the Panthers were going after Deshaun Watson. And then lawyers started going after Deshaun Watson. So they pulled bite. Okay. Sean Watson out of the plans. They need to do something with their quarterback position because Teddy Bridgewater was just was just the most indifferent quarterback in the NFL last year. That the indifferent might have actually been an upgrade to what Teddy Bridgewater was to them last year. They bring in Sam Darnold. Does this mean he's automatically their starter? No. They're going to compete. It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a nice little competition to have between two young quarterbacks. You know, you don't really know who's going to come out on top here. I would be shocked. I would be shocked if it's not Darnold. I would be shocked if Darnold does not end up starting 10-plus games this year, barring injury, barring COVID, barring SARS, whatever the fuck Sam Darnold is going to get into this year. I don't know. What does this do for Sam Darnold? What does this do for the Carolina Panthers? Here's the way I'm going to... Okay. First of all, you know, you could make every excuse in the book for Sam Darnold. Coaching staff, the weapons, the offensive line, Adam Gase... Adam Gase, Adam Gase, Adam Gase, getting sick, getting hurt, all that kind of shit. Very valid, too. Here's the thing. If we look back in three years and Sam Darnold is awesome, we're going to know exactly why we didn't see it coming. Well, we nah, a lot of people are saying this. They're, they're about to see it coming. Whatever. We'll know why he was so bad to start his career, okay? He's been, he's been bad. He's been really, really, really bad. You could say we've seen glimpses. You want to pull together like two plays from this game, two plays from week 15 of last year? Sure, all right? Don, Donald was an early draft capital pick, which will always, always give him some sort of leash, okay? No matter what he does, where he goes, people's hearts will follow because the draft capital was so damn high when he was taken, okay? So Sam Darnold goes over to Carolina, and this weapons group, man, he's done like he's done nothing, okay? So as much as you want to say there's been only bad following him, he's only had bad supporting cast, he's only had a bad scheme, he's had bad coaches, Adam Gase, he's had bad weapons, we probably needed to see a little bit more to be really sold on Darnold. As a Darnold owner in the Superflex Dynasty League, I feel fucking fantastic about this move for him because he moves over to a team. Last year, Jameson Crowder was his best target. If Jameson Crowder was on the Carolina Panthers last year, he would have probably been the fifth best option, okay? So you can't deny that. You look at some quarterbacks where they get one single weapon upgrade and they're like a new fucking quarterback the next year for fantasy, at least statistically speaking. Sam Darnold gets like five fucking upgrades, okay? So you're looking at Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel's gone, but if we're referring back to last year, Jameson Crowder would have been the fifth best passing option on the team behind DJ Moore, Anderson, Curtis Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Jameson Crowder. So Darnold's going to a new cast where he hasn't even sniffed something this athletic, this talented, this versatile of a group. He's also going over to an offensive line, which is much, 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 much better than what they had in New York. Carolina has been an improving offensive line, okay? In 2019, they were 24th in pass blocking per PFF. Last year, they moved up to 17th, so they're middle of the pack. They're creeping up. They're creeping up, and that's what happens when you have better players. Everything starts working better as a cohesive unit, and I would expect that offensive line to take another jump up. So you're looking at at least an average offensive line, an above-average weapons group, and a far, far above-average offensive-minded coach in Joe Brady. If Joe Brady is going to turn this thing around, if there's someone who can turn this thing around with Darnold, I believe it can be Joe Brady. So you want to talk about the situation. This is a schizophrenic situation. You're talking about where he's coming from and where he's going to. Less pressure, not being in New York anymore, not being the Jets' face of the franchise. Now he's having to compete. He's not the guy anymore. Like I think Darnold gets settled back into his groove, where he came from, you know, playing quarterback, enjoying the position with good players around him, 
probably couldn't have had a better situation to go to for Sam Darnold. So, uh, good trade for both sides, man. Clearly, it wasn't working with the Jets. They got something in return, draft capital. They're obviously in rebuild mode. What does this do for the weapons in Carolina? Here's the thing. It doesn't do much for me. Um, the Listen, Dar Darnold, I would say, like, at worst, he'll do exactly what Teddy Bridgewater did last year. Does he come with a ceiling? Possibly. At this point, his ceiling might be more hypothetical, more people just saying he has a ceiling than him actually having a ceiling. Uh, that being said, I do I do foresee improved numbers, okay? Curtis Samuel's uh, out of the way as well. Uh, Christian McCaffrey will be biked for most of the games next year, hopefully. So the target funnel is going to go to C-Mac, to DJ Moore, to Robbie Anderson. Uh, Sam Darnold will probably attack downfield a little bit more than, than, than uh, Teddy Bridgewater did. So... I'm excited. I'm excited overall to see what comes of this. I'm not going to get my hopes up and fucking crazy over here. Uh, Carolina's got the eighth pick in the draft, so they weren't going to get one of the top three quarterbacks. If they wanted to go with Trey Lance, he was also like probably more of a project there, right? You probably needed to have him learn for a year or two before he's taking the reins. He's a very young, pro uh, very young prospect at quarterback. He's a very raw prospect. His best attributes are probably his... Uh, his running ability. So not something that you could just plug into a situation and probably runs off with the fucking starting job and, and does really well. So I think this was kind of best case scenario for them now that they couldn't get Deshaun Watson. It also means that they could focus on other needs, right? If they doesn't mean that they're out of the running for a quarterback at number eight, maybe they do take fucking Mac Jones or something. I think it would be stupid at this point. Uh, let Darnold and Bridgewater kind of battle it out. Let Darnold win the fucking starting job. Let him run it up for a little while and see what happens. But Overall, I think Darnold is not that much better of a quarterback than Teddy Bridgewater. Again, the ceiling could be there. I think it's probably more hypothetical than not, but I do think he provides a little bit more fantasy stability, a little bit more fantasy upside for these guys. So might, uh, probably not the long-term answer, but it's one of the answers to the test. It's like it's like you're getting a multiple choice question, A, B, C, D, and getting Darnold crosses off. B or it crosses off maybe B and D, right? You look over to your to your boy's fucking thing. You know, he his ass study. You didn't study, but Sam Darnold lets you at least cross off one of the answers. So you might not have the answer in him, but you're getting closer and you could. It gives you a better chance of getting the answer there. That's what Sam Darnold, I think, does for it. So not necessarily gonna move DJ Moore like up in my rankings too much. Maybe you want to move him up. Maybe it's a tiebreaker or some shit because I, I don't know if Darnold is really the long term answer here, but it gives you more upside. It gives you more upside than than Teddy Bridgewater did because we know what Teddy Bridgewater is at quarterback. If you have Teddy Bridgewater, you're probably fucked. You probably can't move him for anything in Dynasty right now. If you can get rid of him for a third round rookie pick, absolutely do that shit. ASAP tomorrow, yesterday, tomorrow's tomorrow, whatever you could do to fucking pull that off, uh, do so. Okay. So that's really my breakdown. Uh, I probably missed about 17 different aspects of it because anytime I do these breaking segments, that tends to happen. But Darnold, stock's definitely up for him in terms of dynasty uh, at, at the quarterback position for fantasy because he goes over to a great group of weapons. The weapons in Carolina, not moving much up or down because I don't think this really provides them with a huge ceiling above what they had last year. Slight increase. Christian McCaffrey, nothing else. Just gonna continue to get a 1,000 dump-offs. Um, but excited to see how this how this shit turns out for the Jets. You know, they they got what they got. We already knew they were going to draft the quarterback at number two, probably Zach Wilson. So it's not like anything changes over there. Darnold added a big apple. Me I'm going out in the big apple. I got to go. I'll see y'all later. Hit thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Goodbye. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs>